everybody, Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make these really nice shaker cards. I'm using lots of the product that I've kind of been getting over the last couple of weeks. So this is those flowers from John Next Door and then these, this kind of lattice and the honeycomb and all the edges are from Bright Rosa and they're all the different collections and I'll show you those in a moment. But just look how pretty this is. So this has got the orchid flowers and then it's got this ivy in the back and I have coloured this using my ink pads and then you can see all those iridescent sequins so it's quite a subtle shaker but I think it looks really nice and then inside you've got thinking of you which is just kind of set to the left there so that when that closes you get to see that nice border there and then sending hugs and happy thoughts Okay, so that one is a Thinking of You card. And then this one is a birthday card, so I've gone really bright with this one, and this is using a different one, different set. So this has got this side, this edge here, and then the honeycomb. And again, you can see the sequins. And this time I've done the flower at the bottom. This is the Christmas rose. Really, really lovely flower, I like that one. And again, I've used the ivy, but this time I've just cut it directly from card, coloured cardstock, whereas that one was from white, and then I've coloured it that green colour. And it's got a kind of real nice kind of blend. You can see it's slightly lighter at the ends and stuff. And then I've just used one of my happy birthdays there. I need to do my sentiment inside. But Okay, so first of all, these are the three edge builder dies, sorry. So it is the, this is the lace edge builder. You've got the honeycomb, and there's that one that I used there. You also get the frame, and you get two other borders. That's the one we're going to use today. And then this one, you get these lovely kind of curved wavy ones there. Again, all of them you get the frame for the actual kind of, you know, lace, whatever it is you're using. And then that's the one that I used for that card. So that's those. Everything will be linked as always. And then this is the one I'm going to use today, which is the geometric edge. I have cut it before. I've done a quick card using this one. And it's really nice. And you would have seen me use that border before, but this time I'm going to use this lovely scalloped edge. I think that's going to look really pretty. So that's the background dies that I'm using. These are how these ones look so they all come in a plate so if you haven't seen these from my what did I get video that's the orchid so that one will give you this look really really pretty so that was just all die cut on white and then I just distressed the inside with yellow and I done the little dots there so most of that I done myself and then that's the poppy one today these are the stamp sets it's those two dovecraft ones so this is the occasions and that's the essentials again I know lots of you do have those that's the winter rose so that's that one there and that gives you that now I am still waiting for my foam Iranian foam so the flower forming foam <laughs> to make these flowers because that is made out of foam in the picture and that's what I want to create but it still looks really nice with the with the cardstock so that's that one and then the one that I said I would use all the time and I'm going to be using this on my 3D projects is this one. This is the, they call it the Ivy Dye Plate and it's this one here. Now I've already gone through this one in my dye machine and I've cut another one of these. So you can see what you get. So you get lots of little individual ones but you also get two large pieces. Let's pop that one out. So you get two this size. Okay, and then you get one, two, three, four, five, six individual ones so you can layer it up. So I've just gone and cut them out and that's how the plate looks for that one. And then finally, here is the one for the poppy. So this is the bluesy poppy. And I've got one here to distress with you guys and then I've already done those ones and we're gonna put that together. So I'm gonna have three on this one. I'm gonna make it quite full. So we'll pop all that to one side. And we can start working with this product here. So I have this piece of scrap paper that I've been doing all of my inking on and I've got this piece here and all I've done is I've got this is cherry cobbler this is stamping up. I just wanted a darker red than the red of this. Now you can use black they've used black in the picture there but it was a bit too dark for me I wanted it dark but not as dark so by just using that deeper red I quite like that one. And then just working in that same area because you actually lift colour off from there so you don't have to really use your ink in on your pad too much. And just, as I say, just kissing the very edges. So I'm not going into the centre at all. And just making the edge there darker.
Now you can also ink up the ivy, but I'm going to leave that plain for today. Then I've got my little foam mat here. This is just using the foam that came with my stamping platform, my Tim Holtz one, and that was the black foam as well that was in there. And I've just made, not the foam that you use because you don't need to actually flip the lid. This is just some foam that was also in there. I just made this little piece and it works perfectly. You can buy proper flower um, shaping mats, but this is worked fine for me. And I've got a pink one somewhere as well. So this is what I'm going to do is I want to achieve this shape here. Now you don't have to do this, but I do think there's something quite special about just, even if you just use your finger and your thumb, if you don't have any tools, just roll it. Do something just to lift it up a little bit and it does just bring them to life that little bit more. But I'm just using the thicker end here. A lot of people have got the flower making, like barbarian kind of tools that you can use, the stylus, but I just like this one. I like it when the paper goes nice and shiny. And you want to get all of the creases because they almost start to look like the veins on the leaves. And then once you ink up again, if you want to, some people do this first and then ink, but I do it this way around. <laughs> ink it first and then form it. And then you can always add some more ink if you want to. Okay. And then I'm going to shape these a little bit as well. Just take that center out there. And again with these, I just roll it over the top. Okay, so I've got those two there. I have another one somewhere else that I've done before, but I think it's just fallen down on the floor, so I'll grab that in a bit. Then you also get these pieces here. So what I've done with my plate is, first of all, ran it through with the red cardstock, and then I ran it through again to do the small little ones here. Now you have these smaller pieces here, but in the picture they're not in there. I've looked at poppy pictures and they don't really have that on there, but that is the same shape as this piece almost that goes in the center of the orchid. So I'm not using it, but that doesn't mean obviously it is there to be used, but it definitely isn't on the picture. I've looked close up. So unless it's, it loops underneath there in some way, I'm not sure, but I think it still looks nice, you know, without it anyway. So you can use it if you want to, but I'm not going to. Um, so yeah, those three black, like little center pieces there, and I'm just using the smaller end and just rolling it in the middle so they almost like roll up awful to say but like a dead spider okay so they just curl up there all right keep the little mat actually because that's handy to carry on shaping it so then you just want to layer them up so these ones here largest at the bottom and then you just want to overlay each one so where i've got the gaps there the bigger the thicker side of the leaf i'm going to cover it and then that one i'll cover the next one again so this one's going to be a bit fuller than the other one, so I'm just going to put a dab of glue in the centre. And if you push down, you start to they start to like curve in on each other, which is what you want. Okay, and then these here I'm going to layer up separately. And again, you just want to overlap them, so each one is is offset from the other as you overlap them. They're a little bit fiddly. Doesn't matter if you're not spot on with these tiny tiny ones. I find it easier to do them separate to the main flower and then just put some glue on the bottom and then pop that oh, in the center and there you have your poppy and now you can go and shape it even more so that's still drying a little bit but you could kind of fold those out a little bit like that Okay, just play around with it. It's entirely up to you however you want them to be. I'll play with them a bit more once I stick them to the card. So now that's those already. Okay, so now I want to start shaping the card. Now, because I'm using a 5x7, I will have to put this through my bigger die cutting machine, my A4, because it needs to run through that way. And my big shot is only six inches. So if you do make this and you only have a smaller machine, then you want to make your card so it's a six by six or a four by six, something that you'll be able to easily put through a smaller die machine because this will work on any size card up to, I think this is eight inches. Uh, yeah, it's, it's meant for an eight, up to an eight inch. So there's my card side folding. I want this to be like that. Okay, so I'm just going to run that through my machine. Okay, so that has cut nicely, and there's the side of it. Probably make it out better. There we go. 
really really nice so even that you know you can just have it and you could also still have that now as a top folding card so I'm just going to re-burnish that because it flattened a little in my machine. Okay, so next I'm going to use this mirrored cardstock this time because I haven't used a mirrored yet. I've used a little bit of glitter but that's about it. So I'm not using the frame. So this will cut into the cardstock and then I'm going to make my own frame because this frame is bigger than this card. So what I'm going to do is try and create a bit of a frame. Actually no, I'm going to end up cutting this down. So all I'm going to do right now is just cut this down a little bit. Okay, like so. Now, because this is mirrored cardstock, I'm going to put a sheet of copy paper over the top and then run it through my machine. Because just in case any of the little kind of markings you have on your plates, they can always mark the mirrored card. So I'm just going to run that one through. That's beautifully. And that's even on my old big shot. But look, I've got a couple of little ones just in the centre. There we go. How lovely is that? Look at that against this. It looks so nice. So yeah, there's all the bits. So it's not too messy because now you can just knock them all out in your bin. Okay, so we'll go to that in a sec. While I've got this still out, what I'm going to do is have it inside my card. It's a little bit marked, this one, but I'm going to put white card stock over the top anyway. So let's find a straight edge. That's really got scratched up. Okay, this piece is... I've changed my mind. I'm just going to have it on the edge and then I'm just going to have that to right there. So when you close it, I want you to see all of that. I don't want a border. So I'm just going to stick this in. Okay, so I ended up cutting that piece. So it is two by seven. Okay, so now you just get a nice edge there to your card. Now this piece, I need to cut down because I want it to sit within this section here. So let me just cut it down and I'll tell you the size. Okay, so this is going to go here. Now it doesn't matter how it looks like because this is all going to be covered and I'm going to make a frame with some more of that mirrored cardstock in a minute. But basically I'm just preparing the shaker part of the card. So on the back side of this I'm going to add some red tape. Get it as close to the edge as possible. It's going to stick through a little bit because obviously you know, there's loads of holes in it, but it's all going to be covered with your acetate and your frame. So this is a little bit long-winded. It's more as a, you know, inspiration this video, because again, I'm just showing you a way to really decorate and um, use what you've got to make a nice card. So yeah, it is sticking. Don't worry, it will all work out okay. Okay, so I've got some acetate here and you just want it to be able to cover this. It's easier to just stick it on and then cut around it rather than the other way around. Cut your acetate down. So, it on there. You're not going to see a lot of the acetate is there to keep all the sequins in more than anything. And then I'm just going to cut around. Okay, so now I've got this acetate piece here. Next, on the back now, I'm going to add my foam. Now I need really thin foam, so whenever I need thinner, I don't buy it. I stick with the cheap one that I pick up from the pound shop. This is what I always use, unless I'm using these squares or the rectangles. And then I'm just going to stick a strip. This is wax paper or um, greaseproof paper, I think. I can't remember what this one's called. It's this white roll that I've had for ages. So. You want to make sure whatever it is, you can peel off the other side of your double-sided tape. And then I'm going to cut strips. And the reason why it's good to put it on this is it doesn't gunk up your scissors. So I use an oldish pair anyway, something I'm not too worried about blunting. But now you can cut these nice strips. And I know many of you like this tip. I've done this for many years and it always works. So... Yeah, I don't buy the expensive stuff. So now I've got these strips. So on the underside of this, take one of them. And you're just going to go all the way around the frame. Now I'm going to double this up because this foam is not too thick. The sequins I'm using are quite, I guess, dimensional. So I want to ha I have two layers. So I'm just going to do this layer first on all four sides. Okay, so that's one layer and then I'm going to peel that off. OK, 
Okay, so now I've got that with the two layers of foam. So basically that is going to go over the top there with all the shaker bits and pieces. And then I'm just going to make a frame to go over it. And then I'm going to have all these beautiful pieces cascading up the card. And it should, fingers crossed, all look very nice. So the sequins that I'm going to pop in here, I don't have any red, but I think I want to stick with just that nice, it's kind of like a white, I mixed this up. It was white and like iridescent sequins, but there's a few purple, like dark purple little bits in there. So I have to pick them out, but I'm just going to run a little line. Put quite a few in because it is deep. So I'm just going to push them in and just make sure, I always do a test first before you take your backing off that you can stick it down okay, like so. So now I'm just going to take the backing off here. If you want to also go around the sides with some of the anti-static powder just to remove any stickiness so the sequins don't stick, I'm not going to bother for this one because they're the same colour. You can't see them that much. If it was a darker sequin then I probably would but because these are light anyway against the white background I'm not too worried. So I'm just going to very carefully, I don't think I gave the final size of this piece so it's a piece of, it's, you want to do three and a half by six and three quarters okay so make sure that's all stuck and then give it a good shape and you can see them, I mean you can hardly see them at all, they are there. You get a really nice, there you go, you just get a nice kind of glisten and again it's just that kind of interactive part of it that looks really nice. But yeah, when they settle they do look lovely. Okay, so yeah, I'm now going to put a frame around mine. So I'm going to cut a piece of mirrored cardstock again to three and a half by six and three quarters. Okay, so I've cut it down, I've got my knife and my ruler, but I just want to check that I don't have a rectangle die that might get a nice frame. This one is so big it doesn't fit in my normal plastic wallet, so I kind of keep them like that. I'm worried I'm going to damage it actually. I need to get some bigger ones, but I just, just have a little look, maybe that one, because I don't want the frame too thick. I don't think these are going to be long enough. Yeah, no, they're not going to... Well, saying that though, I could go up. You want to make sure your frame is going to cover your foam, okay? So... That one might work actually. You know what? I'm going to do it because the bottom is going to be covered by a lot of this anyway. But what I would have said, if not, okay, I just with my ruler, pop it down about I don't know half an inch in, and come down half an inch, and then start cutting, and just cut a rectangle out within. So you've got a half an inch kind of border. Like I said, anything that's going to cover that. But I'm going to run this through my die machine. So again, I'm just showing you the process really. Most of this I always do off camera, but I just want to show you how I kind of think things out. So I'm just going to run that through again because there's going to be this area here, which I can reuse. I'll put some copy paper down and then you won't get anything kind of like markings and things. Hmm, it's quite thin on the sides, but... Oh, actually, I think... I think I can get away with it. By the time I've got all this going on on top... I don't think you're really going to see it. It needs to come down a little bit there. So in fact, it's a little bit tall, so I do need to take a little bit off the bottom. But I think it's going to look really nice. No, I'm going to stick with it. Sod it. Let's go for it. Okay, and then with this piece here, I'm just going to grab some more red tape and just go along. This is the quarter inch, no, one eighth of an inch tape. So it's perfect for these, you know, kind of projects where you've got little thin strips like that. It fits in there perfectly. So I'm just going to run this around the edges okay so now I want to stick this down so just make sure you line it all up like so there we go so now I can do all the fun stuff okay so I found the other ones so I'm gonna have it kind of trailing up so I remember I said that in my video when I got these they I think they'd look really nice kind of crawling up almost like a, a climber in a garden. So I want it quite full. I'm going to kind of have that one there. And then I'm going to have that big one there. Now these cards are really dimensional and they fit perfectly in my 5x7 box envelopes. I'll link them up there. You've got no problems there. So yeah, go for it. Now I don't know actually if I need, it might just be two on this one, not that third one. So I think I'm going to have them like that. Have the happy birthday. Probably have that there actually just kind of nestled over. Yeah, I really like that. I think that looks lovely. 
Okay, so I'm going to splodge some glue down over all of these stems, over the ends of them, and then kind of squash it down with that big poppy. And then this one up here, I want to hide under this leaf here. And then I want it kind of being able to kind of be quite free, but because this one's quite high up, I'm going to just pop a little bit of glue just behind that one. And I think this one could do with just securing itself there. And maybe that one as well. But the rest of them, I think they'll be fine. If you just pop it up, no, that one's going to go down as well. So it's mainly the tops of all of the... There we go. Perfect. And that holds it up. So see, look how much dimension I've got. Okay, then this one is going to go... Hmm, maybe there and there. This is when I want you to talk to me. This is when I wish I could hear what you're thinking. There and there. I think there. Yeah. I don't want to cover that, but then I feel like it's going off like that. Whereas maybe... Like that. <laughs> I'm going to go here. You're probably, some of you are going, no, 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 but I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Okay, let me take the backing off of this one, because what I need to do is double up the foam on one side to the same height of the foam that I've used there. So towards this side, I'm just going to pop one piece and then another piece. Okay, so that way it's got the same height. And then on the other end, I'm just going to use some hot glue. And I don't want that. It's going to have to go like there. No, that's fine. I'm happy with that. And then this one needs to go there. There we go. Now I could, with that poppy, I could always put that on the box, the envelope box. There you go. I hope you like my positioning. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, it is always difficult. Sometimes I put things down and afterwards I think, oh no, I wish I'd put it somewhere else. But no, I'm really pleased with this. I think it's turned out lovely. So there you have the poppy, the orchid and the winter rose. So it's all using those edge border dyes, the bright rosa. And then there are all the flowers from John next door. But I love the ivy, just how different it looks, you know, on those different cards. And yeah, hopefully inspired you to create something similar. I really like them. I'm not sure my favorite. Well, actually, I think my favorite is the poppy. I really do like that one. Then this one and then this one. So yeah, let me know what you think in the description box below. Let me know if you like them. If you do, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.